Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to continue my teaching videos on how to teach you how to use the various tools to see what's going on here with these um, large hurricanes. So what we have here is if you Google, well, first of all, I'll get the lights to improve the contrast. Okay, so if you Google NHC, National Hurricane Center, NOAA, you can get to this site here. National Hurricane Center site, and you see this type of map. And what we're seeing is we see Hurricane Irma, which just turned into a category four. And if you click on Irma, okay, so as of 11 p.m. on Monday, category four, maximum sustained winds, 140 miles an hour, 943 millibar is the central pressure, and how it's moving, west at 13 miles per hour. Okay, now what you'll notice here is an X here, which is um, a, 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 tr a tropical a disturbance, tropical distur disturbance, area of low pressure, starting to be rotation, pretty disorganized. Okay, it's got a high probability of forming, and this would be um, named uh, Julia, Julia, I believe, after like I, J is next, Julia, or this could become Julia if it amplifies. This is exactly where in this region is where Harvey formed as a tropical disturbance, moved across the warm water of the Gulf, became a category four when it hit uh, Texas. And then because of the jet streams confining it, churned around here and of course dumped 50 into the rain on Houston and you know, huge mess. It's gonna be probably close to $200 billion in, um, in damages. Okay, uh, so the jet streams kept it in place. It was kind of blocked and stuck. That was very unusual. That's why I'm calling it a superstorm, Superstorm Harvey, and I did a previous video on that. So what we see here is there's another problem, there's another chance of this, there's a disturbance, 50% chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. The water's very warm there. Okay, this is, a, this is basically how, how uh, Harvey started. So hopefully this doesn't generate into another Harvey, um, you know, and hit up here, you know, do what the other Harvey did, Harvey 2.0, while well, this is coming in as well, well, Irma's coming in. I mean, that would be the worst case. This develops into a strong storm hitting here, and this comes up and maybe combines, or depending on the, its, its route. So let's have a look um, a bit more at what's going on here. Now, um, the 200 million, 200 billion rather from Harvey, I mean, that exceeds Katrina plus uh, Sandy, basically. Sandy came up the coast here and did a left turn because it was blocked by the jet stream. So I'll talk about the jet streams and how they're influencing these storms, you know, how climate change is warming the ocean water, so the storms are becoming bigger. When they do generate, the jet streams are guiding them, so their behavior is, you know, normally they just go through, they hit the land, they weaken, and they shoot off, but that didn't happen, of course, with Harvey. So what will happen with Irma? Let's see what, you know, let's try to figure this out. So um, pause the video often and have a look at, uh, you know, just reproduce what I'm doing. So if you go down here, you can look at wind speed probabilities. Okay, so I click on this. Okay, so this is as of 8 p.m. Um, and this is sort of what you can see is the probability of tropical storm force wind. So it's showing basically here's where we are with, with Irma. And this is the projected route here with high probability in this zone. As you go out further in time and further in the past, the probabilities, you know, spread out. Okay, so when we get out here, you know, the probability, you know, it's 5 to 10% in the outer band. So the storm could be over here, it could be over here, it could be up here. Okay, as, the, as things proceed from these models, this is from the... Uh, the, the, the GFS model, the, the US model, there's also a Euro model and they're tending to converge. Okay, so you can look at that type of thing to see. Most of the, so odds are, you know, it will pass through maybe your Nick Florida and come into the Gulf. If it comes into the, you know, most of the, this curve is showing it coming in, well, over half of it is coming into the Gulf, some of it crossing Florida. Okay, I mean, it could still curve up here, you know, we'll see, but the probability of that is getting lower. So, let's see, if we look at the cones, okay, we talk about this cone. So here's where we are, 11 p.m. on Monday, 
Okay, here's where we're expected to be on, you know, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So the cone is proceeding this way. Okay, it spreads out. It's a probability cone. Um, okay, it gives the current speed, maximum sustained winds, 140 miles an hour. Um, category four, it turned into a category four. These red places are where there's, there's uh, hurricane warnings on these islands, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, etc. Okay, um, this shows, the problem is, is this has been trending down. If you look at previous cones, these cones have been coming up more this way. As, as, as this guy is moving, the cones are starting to shift down. So the worst case, like I said, is this goes into the Gulf and then curves up. You know, if it hits uh, New Orleans or if it continues on, the Gulf is very warm. It's likely to be a category four or five, um, or, you know, a very strong five even when it hits landfall um, towards the, you know, Sunday, Monday, and be here Saturday, it will be influencing Florida if it follows this particular route. Okay, so let's have a look um, at the categories here. Okay, so if I just go to Google Images, go to Google, Google Google Images, select Google Images, look, look at hurricane categories. These are the sort of categories. So, you know, we're look category four was was um, Harvey when it hit land. Okay, this is the wind speed in miles per hour, storm surge. Um, the storm surge varies depending on the coastline and if it's curved in like it is in the Gulf, the water can get concentrated there. The surge is largest in the right front quadrant of the storm. So the storm is rotating this way and the right front quadrant is where you add the forward motion of the storm with the rotational motion. So the winds are maximum there and the storm surge will be maximum there. Um, this, is, this was over Houston for Matthew, so that's why it was, or Matthew for Harvey, so that's why it was so bad. Um, there's also you know, lots of information here on storm surges and so on. Um, in terms of the pressures and uh, where are we here? Yeah, okay, so here's categories and there's wind speed, the barometric pressure. So you can, you know, category fives are less than 920 millibar typically, you know, and then it's about a thousand at sea level. So it's very, very low pressure in the center of these storms and the stronger, the lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. Um, okay, so you can familiarize yourself on some of the previous storms and, you know, here's, for example, surges under different categories. Um, and there's lots of information on damages and, you know, the speeds in meters per second, knots, miles per hour, kilometers an hour, if you want to convert. Okay, lots of information here. So let's have a look. So remember the path here. Okay, so this is a path right now tracking just north of these islands and the center is coming between, say, Cuba and Florida. So remember that, and let's go to Climate Reanalyzer. So if you Google Climate Reanalyzer, and you go daily temperatures, and look at uh, the sea surface temperature um, right here, for example. Okay, in this region, here is where the storm is right here, and it's coming up here, and this is all red. All red is 30 degrees higher and higher Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. As long as the water is over 26.5 or 80, that then the storm will gain energy as it's going across that hot water. That's the sea surface temperature. Now what the difference is with climate change, global warming is 93% is, uh, of the heat is going into the ocean. So the oceans are warming. It's not just the water at the surface, it's the water below. So when a hurricane goes through, it, it extracts the energy from the surface if there's cold water underneath, that water will come up and leave a trail of cold water behind the hurricane, so another one couldn't follow in its path. But when, because the water is heated down to depth, when the hurricane is, is going along, taking all the energy from the surface, and the water that upwells to replace that energy that's sucked away is, is warm water as well. If the water's warmed down to several hundred meters, um, then the water is still warm for another hurricane to follow along in the same path, or if this hurricane is going slow, it won't self-quench by bringing up cold water and then losing strength. It'll bring up warm water and keep gaining strength, even when it's moving very slowly. So this is a, this is a big difference. 
Now we can look down here and see the, the see um, on a different map. If we go see surface temperature anomaly, okay, you can see that's the difference from the long-term average, and you can see the water, the anomaly. There is a positive anomaly here, but it's not like it's not like huge. It's not four degrees, six degrees, or whatever. It's more like in this range, up to two degrees or so, warmer than normal. Same with the the Gulf, although you know there's some cold areas here, right? So it's so um, okay. So let's have a look at some more details. So if you Google Earth Null School, this is the type of thing that you get, and you can see the storm here. And let's have a look at it. Okay, this is the guy coming up, following. And you can zoom in with your pointer, with your slider on your mouse, and you can see the center here. These are the surface winds. Okay, so we're getting 140 miles an hour, but you won't be able to pick that out. It's right in the eye wall where it's strongest, uh, 140 kilometers an hour. You can click on this, and it changes the units. So we can go 88 miles an hour or so on, meters a second. Okay, so you can click onto whatever units you want to see. Um, and if you click on this, and you can bring up, um, uh, let's go mean sea level pressure. Right, I talked about the pressure of the eye. Okay, so this, if you click here, uh, 998, right in the dead center is, uh, you know, I think it said here, it said that it was uh, something like uh, 960 or something whatever it is. But anyway, I can't get that point because the resolution isn't so good with this, but let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a look at the ocean. Okay, these are waves in here. So you're getting waves generated, th almost 14 meter high waves, which is a multiply, I guess I can click here. 43.7 foot high waves. Okay. You can put it in what 44 foot ways you can put it in whatever units you want um and now if we look at uh sea surface temperature here okay let's zoom out and let's get rid of the menu here okay so here's the sea surface temperatures here's where the storm is it's coming up here when it reaches here you know 30 degree plus temperatures 31 and so on you can zoom in and expand and see what the water temperature is all the way along so so this is uh close to 30 degrees just under all the way along and then above 30 in all this region so this storm will gain incredible amounts of strength if it comes along here if it comes a bit lower and comes over these islands it'll lose some strength until it gets into the gulf and gains strength um and uh but the water is super warm and it's warm to depth all along okay so um, let's have a look at the jet streams now. So if I go, uh, let's go back to air. This is the surface again. Okay, and now let's go up in the atmosphere. So this is about a one and a half kilometers up in the atmosphere, three kilometers up in the atmosphere, about five, five and a half kilometers in the atmosphere, 250, that's the jet stream uh, location. So right now you'll notice that the this so this storm is tracking along this way so what happens is this look at the jet streams they're low here they're coming over florida so if the storm track changes to the north here the best case it could go into this and be pushed away if it keeps tracking right along here then it will start slowing down here gaining energy and likely curve around here you know and cut across florida or if it manages to come down a bit farther south, it'll come along here and catch these and then curve, you know, could hit Texas and come across New Orleans. I mean, it's wide open right now as, as to what, what this storm will do. Now, of course, you know, it's going to take till the weekend, till it's gonna take uh, six days or so to come up here, six or seven days, and what are the jet streams gonna do? In the case of, of um, in the case of, of the previous storm, uh, the jet stream, this configuration here was further north. It was up here. So, so the, the storm just stalled here and just stayed here. There were no jet streams to drag it up this way. So if the, the worst case would be this thing comes right into the Gulf and these, and these jet streams here move up. And then this storm could hover around and do the same thing as the previous one. Thank you.